Hi there, welcome to Nebi Invest. Farushan Financial Services is one of three financial companies I have been looking at in regards to a potential long-term buy and hold. Probably not the sexiest of companies, all three of these, but I do believe if you do hold these companies for the long term, five to ten years, you'll see capital appreciation of your holdings and also some fairly good dividends during that period as well. More than likely, those dividends will increase through time. And the whole point of investing is to compound your wealth or the value of your holdings in a company. And I think these three companies do have that capability to do exactly that. I might say they aren't the sexiest of companies, but sometimes the unsexy companies are the best sorts of investments because you can get them at low risk and you still will get really good returns in the long term. So let's have a look at Fiducian Financial Services and just a few facts in regards to this company. Fiducian Financial Services actually listed in 2000 under another name, that was Fiducian Portfolio Services with a decode FPS. The company went through a restructure in 2015. I believe it was through or because of some regulatory issues. They changed the name to Fiducian Financial Services and the ticket code to FID. This is a diversified financial services company and they provide the following five operating divisions, financial planning, investment funds management, superannuation, investment platform administration, and infotech solutions. They've been growing over the last, or ever since they actually did that restructure, and we'll have a look at their operating cash flow and receipts going back to when they listed in 2000, and you'll see almost the exact time they did this restructure. So this restructure back in 2015 was a good thing for the company. Market cap, 214 million, not on the low or high side. I say it's pretty good value at these point in time. And when I say pretty good, I don't mean cheap. I mean fairly valued. So that's probably a better word, way to say that. Revenue, 38 million. Operating cash flow positive by 13.1 million in the previous year. So they are operating cash flow positive. They are profitable. They do issue a dividend. And when I calculate one of my favorite metrics, market cap to operating cash flow, that gives us a number of 16. I do prefer enterprise value, but they don't have much debt or much cash. So that would, 16 would be on a slightly high side. I would prefer something under 10, but it's not on the high side. Anything over 20 would be on the high side. So as again, I'd say this is fairly valued. For these sort of companies, I do look at these metrics, but another metric I do pay attention to is funds under management and whether that's growing through time. So let's have a look at that right now. Before I talk about funds under management, they do have a dividend of 23 cents in the past year. So that is a dividend yield of 3.4 cents. Dividend has been growing over the past, well, over the past 10 years or so. So we do see that dividend growing slowly. And that's the sort of thing you do want to see in a company you hold, because if you are remaining patient, even though the dividend yield might be only 3.4% right now, in 10 years, based off where you bought in, that dividend yield could be well above 10%. PA ratio, 19.7, a little bit higher than some of the other companies I have been looking at, like Bell Financial Group, Sequoia, that sort of thing. Funds under administration on the 26th of May, they did release a presentation on that day, and they gave us the funds under administration, which is $2.75 billion, and funds under management at the same point in time was $3.7 billion. In isolation, that means nothing. I would like to know what sort of trend there is. So I just went back through the past year to see what it is at the previous half yearly released in February and then the half yearly released in 2020. Have they grown funds since then? And they have. Funds under administration have grown from 2.3 billion in the half year of 2022 to 2.75 billion. And funds under management have grown from 2.97 billion to 3.7 billion. So they are growing those two important metrics. And just for comparison um, points here, I just wanted to see how that compares to, say, Magellan, Pendle, and Platinum Asset Management. For example, Magellan has funds under management of $110 billion, also has a market cap of $9.5 billion. Platinum have funds under management of $24.7 billion, market cap of $2.9 billion. So 
fiduciary funds under management of 3.4 billion and market cap of 200 million. So if you do compare those metrics to those other two companies I've mentioned, it is on the low side, but then you probably are paying a premium, particularly for Magellan, because they're much well-renowned, probably a lower risk as well. However, in saying that, you'll probably see that funds under management for fiduciary has a better opportunity to grow at a quicker rate over the next decade. Something interesting about Fiducian, they do release an Appendix 4C every six months, not every three months, like other companies do. I'm not sure why they do this. So every quarter when they're not releasing a half yearly or yearly, they are releasing an Appendix 4C. This was released in April of 2021. So we do have an idea how they are performing through the quarter. I received some customers at 16 million, so that's pretty good. And again, they are operating cash flow, and for the quarter, that was 3.7 million. You'll notice they did lose cash in the quarter, so cash on hand fell from 16.7 to 15.4 million. However, the main reason behind that decrease in cash was because they did issue some dividends or give dividends to their shareholders, and that's why the cash decreased in the quarter. Went through the history of Fiducian all the way back to when they listed on the ASX in 2000 under the different name. And this is their receipts and operating cash flow history. So receipts is those purple bars and operating cash flow is the line, the green line there. So you can see operating cash flow is quite lumpy up and down quite a bit. But operating cash flow or receipts, um, you can see prior to 2015, but let's put in there, that's when they restructured. So prior to their restructuring, Receipts was flat, uh, and you could say operating cash flow was flat, even though it was in a sort of like a wave pattern. So it does seem like that restructure they underwent in 2015 was positive for the company because ever since then, we've seen the receipts and operating cash flow really take off. We've also seen the share price take off as well. So let's have a look at the charts. Now, we'll look at the weekly chart and the daily chart. Unfortunately, when we only have data since they restructured because they changed their name. So I don't have any of the charts back from when they were Fiducian Portfolio Services. First chart we want to look at is the weekly chart for Fiducian, going back to when they restructured and relisted back on the ASX in early 2015. Share price at that point was $1.80. We saw the share price really take off in the beginning of 2016, and for two years was in a nice little bull run, going from about $2 to a high of just under $6. During 2018, if you remember back then, uh, particularly towards the end of that year, we did see a bit of a correction in the markets as there was a threat of rising interest rates in the United States. Uh, if you remember, Trump was getting angry with the Fed because of that. And the share price of Fiducia did uh, suffer because of that. In fact, it fell from $5.60 to a share price of $3.60, which is a good level of support for the company share price because we saw that level reached again during the COVID-19 financial panic. However, the share price has taken off from there and is right now at around $6.80 and at all time highs. If we look at the daily chart, which goes back to just prior to the COVID-19 financial panic, you can definitely see a bit of an uptrend in that chart. So now let's have a look at the daily chart. With the daily chart for Fiducian going back to pre-COVID-19 levels, share price got to around about $6.20 right before then. And then just like every other company on the ASX and probably every other company in the world, the share price fell off a cliff over a month period. In fact, the share price for Fiducian went from $6.20 to about $3.60. If you bought in on the lows around March 23rd, 24th, you would have been a very happy camper indeed because the share Share price of Fiducian uh, rallied quite hard off that. We do have an uptrend here, a well-defined uptrend with three points, so a nice uptrend. And you can see back in March of this year, well, you can't see because I've got the dates given, but back in March of this year, the share price did hit the uptrend and bounced nicely off it. That's exactly what you want to see. If we again see the share price hit that uh, uptrend and then bounce off it, that would be another sign that this in, in uptrend is a fairly strong uptrend. Over the past month, we have seen the share price move sideways or consolidate. I like that. I do like periods of consolidation because the share price of a company can or is allowed to breathe. And if we do see the share price move above $7, that would be a bullish move. I think the chances are quite high. Eventually, we will see the share price move above that $7 level because there is pretty good chances 
if the company can maintain the growth they have seen in the past five years or since they've restructured, uh, if they can continue that growth story, more than likely the share price of this company will continue to go higher. Now onto the important question, is Fiducian Financial Services a buy, hold or sell? Before I talk about that, I just want to say, Anything I say here in regards to fiducian financial services is not a recommendation to you blindly do exactly what I talk about here. The whole point of me doing this video is to share ideas with you and hopefully any ideas you do like, you do your own research and see or discover whether this company fits into your own portfolio, your own strategy. So the question is, does fiducian financial services fit into one of my two strategies or portfolios? More than likely, it does not fit into my momentum sentiment. So I'm not thinking about the short or medium term in regards to this company. So it doesn't fall into my long-term buy and hold strategy or portfolio. It's getting very close. So when I think about companies that fit into that strategy, I'm looking at the, the potential of dividends growing in the next five to 10 years. And if we do see dividends growing in the next five to 10 years, more than likely we'll see the share price follow up. A lot of investors out there blindly don't look at that little thing. They'll just look at the dividend yields, for example, banks or Telstra, and they won't look at the growth of the company itself. And the best way to get really good returns in the future is to buy a company that's increasing dividends. And when you see increasing dividends, you'll see increasing share price as well, more than likely. And that's the best way to really supercharge your returns in the long term. Fiducial Financial Services almost fits into that category for me. I've looked at a few financial companies in the past few weeks. Those three companies are Fiducian, Sequoia, and Bell Financial Group. I do think Bell Financial Group is potentially the best buy. It does look like it's the cheapest. Really good dividend yield as well. So I do think that has the best chance of better returns over the longer term. However, in saying that, I do think Fiducian Financial Services based off their growth history, and this is assuming they can continue to grow over the next five to 10 years, because if they don't grow, this would not be a buy. They need to grow. And I am assuming, and sometimes you do have to make assumptions that if they can grow, this is definitely a potential long-term buy and hold sort of company. That is it for this video of Fiducian Financial Services. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this company or any other company I may have mentioned in this video, like Telstra, Bell Financial Group, uh, maybe leave a comment or a question. I'll answer anything you have to say ASAP, although I can be a little bit tardy in answering comments. Before I leave, I just want to say that I'm not a financial advisor, so if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.